So here's what we are going to start with, guys. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are 0-7 in 2013. A lot of people are blaming the head coach, Greg Schiano, but uh, very quickly, Ben, I know you watched this game in a number of ways. What did you see from the uh, Buccaneers last night on Thursday Night Football? They're terrible. <laughs> I mean, they're terrible. They don't have any fight in them. Uh, Mike Lennon might be okay. You know, uh, hard to say at this point. He didn't, you know, I mean. Rookie quarterback. He, yeah, he's a rookie quarterback. He's a traditional rookie quarterback. Where so he's thrown more passes in his yeah. first 181 throws in his first four games than anybody ever in their first four starts in the <laughs> NFL. Well, when Doug Martin goes down with an injury, that certainly does not well, help I mean, his he cause. Had Martin for the first two and a half games, but he, which is you true. Know, uh, so I don't know. I, I, you, now our standard is, my God, if you're not producing and winning games like every other rookie quarterback over the last two years, all of a sudden last really even longer than that. Uh, this seems like an old school rookie quarterback. Like, it, you know, I mean, in three years, might Mike Lennon be a productive, capable starting NFL quarterback? It's possible. He's, you know, he's big. Uh, he's got a big arm. He takes a while to get rid of the ball, but I imagine that could be sped up. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but they're terrible, man. They, their defense is not bad, but they had right. no. They don't. They don't really have. I was they, thinking they, they seem to have no fight. Their defense seems like it could have been the only thing that could maybe save them a little bit. And I keep forgetting. Darrell Revis is on the team. Yeah. I looked up. Doesn't I mean, even matter. I, I didn't watch much of this game live last night. Uh, there was a bigger game on, and. Um, I'm not going to mention it, but um, there was, so I, I glanced a few times, you know, a couple breaks. I was like, oh, that's right. Darrell Revis is on this team, and, and I won't watch. And they're playing, and like, it took them a bunch of games to finally play man. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, they got Darrell Revis, they made and a big they, trade for him, and, and they, they put him in a zone. Yeah. This is how bad it is. It's like being in Cuba. Yeah. Playing for, uh, playing for Greg Schiano. So if you play for Greg Schiano, it's like you get free health care. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what Michael Bennett said, who is now with Seattle. I believe he's a defensive end. People just really hate it when you have to dive at people's legs. At the end of the day, we've got to keep going and move on to the next game and try to make a living. Some of these guys on other teams are our friends. And then one more, an anonymous Buccaneer, said this. He gathered us, as in Chiano, before we practiced and told us that if Belichick said something to us on the field, we should listen. He said, treat their coaches like they're your coaches. We were like, huh? When we practiced together, whatever Belichick wanted, he did. It was hilarious. He, as here, Shiano, is acting like Mr. Tough Guy all the time. And when Belichick wanted something, he was like, yes, Bill. No, you, you get the billboards. We all know the who cares if fans put paper bags on their heads and hold up signs. And then some rich yeah, I mean, look at Cleveland. They've been doing group. it every year. <laughs> 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 and then some, some rich group buys out signs and wants to put all around town. Sure. Those things, are just it kind of gives public opinion, but it doesn't do much. I mean, we remember Jacksonville was trying to do a... Some members for of Tebow. Jacksonville is trying to do get a coalition together to get Tebow. That's not going to happen. But um, so those things are just by the wayside. But once you have players that want to come out and openly say something about the guy and call out names and point out things he said, you start quoting your coach in practice and saying disparaging things about him. It's a well, he's lost kid. the locker room. It's only room. getting worse. Not yeah. to be cliche, but it seems like he's lost the locker yeah. room. But here, here are the things that get me: the the, the kneel down stuff with Eli and Peyton Manning. I mean, one Buccaneer even said, I've never seen Peyton cuss, and Peyton cussed out Greg Schiano because they were trying to go for his legs and they were trying to strip the ball. Same with Eli Manning. So Tom Coughlin did the exact same thing. But it's not only that. It's, it's the Josh Freeman saga that mm -hmm. happened that just should have never happened. I understand you don't want him to be your guy. Just bench him. You don't have to go out of your way and leak a report. I mean, like, look, we, we have all, I have the right to say that I think Greg Schiano leaked that report. And I, I think that is awful yeah. as an NFL coach. I think it's terrible. When you're 0 6 and 0 7 now in the NFL, you have decisions to make. Like, you obviously are headed in the wrong direction. They might not have a quarterback on their roster. They might. They're, they got a great chance at the number one pick. They're going for the Teddy Bridgewater sweeps. Whether it's Bridgewater, whether it's Marcus Mariota, whoever it is, mm -hmm. they could. Uh, but, you know, NFL teams don't generally try to lose. We don't see that. Sure. Although they don't really seem like they have to try very hard. Um, they've spent big on, you know, they made peculiar moves. You don't get their, You don't get Revis. Mm -hmm. If you think you're going to be in running for the number one pick, like it doesn't, right. that doesn't make sense. That's Revis goes to Agreed. a team that theoretically is pretty good and just mm -hmm. gets gets better. So the management has been peculiar. So they got to decide right now: Are we going to spend the first year of having a new quarterback on the roster and a massive roster overhaul, the rebuild that has to begin because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't look like it's already begun. Like, no one's going around saying, hey, this team's got so much talent on defense, it's like they're coming together. They're going to be bad next year. So they got to start over, and do you want Greg Schiano to be that coach? 
And I would say, if I were them, and you know why I would say this, because God forbid, what if they go five and four down the stretch? Yeah. What if they start playing well? And if you don't think he's the guy, then you need to call him into the office today. Out of anything. That's it. Fire him today. Name an interim coach. Go through your season. Pick a coach. You know who's feeling great, by the way, right now is Raheem Morris. I was going to say Raheem Morris. He's like, yeah. Look, they, the roster was terrible. Like I was, we we weren't that bad. You yeah. know? But speaking yeah. to my next point that I was going to throw at you guys, I mean, has the Glazer family even helped out this team at all? Have they tried to improve the team as much as possible? Well, they obviously they tried to improve the right. team. They 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 with went with one with one big signing. No, on defense? they signed Vincent Jackson, who's a, a much sure. better player than I ever gave him credit for. He's good. He had 19 catches the last two games before this game, where really they just seemed they were they were going through the motions. I mean, that was a 31-6 game that didn't feel. That close. Sure. And it still goes through the same thing. Again, when you make the moves, you bring in Darius and you play zone. You bring in a Vincent Jackson, and then you have a fight with your starting quarterback, Josh Freeman. Maybe he was falling apart. I mean, he hasn't had a chance to prove himself anywhere else. And when he went to Minnesota, he looked kind of sh- shabby in that game. But this is the beginning of his time there. But when you have these pieces, and it all it is is a consistent mishandling of these pieces in your team, it, it, this is when it's the most blatant like, call of who yeah, it some, falls on. Right. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's not complicated. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes, like, there seems to be a mount. The players don't like him. <clears throat> he may have committed a significant sort of breach of protocol with the handling of the Josh Freeman thing. We don't yep. know who leaked it. But this is a guy who is in charge of that organization. I mean, he's a big, well, I'm a big man. Right. You know, I find it hard to believe that somebody did it without his notice. But we don't know. One We're of sure the former happened. players even said he has little man syndrome. Or yeah, or a little bit. Yeah, and, so and, the, and if, that, if that Belichick story is true, that seems to indicate it. Like, he'll suck up right. to the guy who... So, you know, he needs to go. And uh, he was uh, he did great things at Rutgers, and maybe he's one of those He's going to go back, not to Rutgers, but he's going to go back to college football. Yeah, maybe he's yeah. better at college, and maybe in a few years he'll have learned. I mean, guys figure it out. But this is, you know, he doesn't apparently know how to treat professional athletes. So very quickly, last word. Uh, you said that Shiano does not stay. Mm-hmm. Ben, does he stay? I think he gets fired this Through week. Through the end of the I season. Think he, I think this there's week? a good chance he gets fired today.